Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is Off the Press on Plus TV Africa. My name is Felicity Eze. We can basically look at the headlines and try to figure out what is behind it. To help me uh, make a sense of it, I have uh, Dr. John Mark Boala. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you. All right, we'll start with a punch newspaper this morning, and the big one here is samples. Lagos creates 20 centers. FCT comes residents' houses. You find details on page two and eight of the paper. I had a couple of writers. Um, the big one we talked about in the news, but I'm hoping that the doctor will uh, speak a little more on it. And that's the 51-year-old doctor treating COVID-19 patient dies at Luth. 31 discharged in Lagos, Oshun FCT. Songo Lu awaits Jack Ma's kits. I volunteer to donate my blood for coronavirus research, says Mark Ainde. Okay. Uh, we also have um, heavy traffic um, at a bridge along Airport Road in Abuja. In spite of the lockdown order, we see so much traffic and the police trying to uh, ask people to go home. And of course, we see marketplaces and other roads in Lagos, Ogun. Uh, that's it on your screen now. Uh, what's underneath it? Uh, there's a story on Benue. Police arraign four Benue men for killing Ekite chief. Khan declares one week daily prayers against COVID 19. Lockdown. One dies as hoodlums attack Lagos communities. At the very bottom of the paper, we have, um, we're not, we've not discussed Edo Ondo Paul's postponement. That's uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission speaking. Aggrieved Chinese firms, workers vandalize burn companies' vehicle. You find details of that on page 10 of the paper. And then oil firms, 4.58 trillion hour loan repayment on the threat. That's an investigation probably done by the Punch newspaper. Let's flip to the top now to see what's there. FG pays 200 billion naira to offset Genko's gas bills. Katsina, highest recipient of conditional cash disbursement. Security agents killed as killed. I'll take that again. Security agents killed 18 during lockdown. That's the National Human Rights uh, Council. And of course, we have the one at the top, COVID-19, Nigeria, South Africa, others lose $4.2 billion. This is according to the IMF. You find details of that on page um, 17 of the paper. Doctor, let's uh, start with the big screamer here. Uh, samples, Lagos creates 20 centers and FCT coming uh, residents' houses for possible uh, cases. Yeah, uh, the extra center is a good move. Um, I hope that will also help with testing. They have to decentralize testing. It doesn't have to be just two, three centers. We need to do more testing and contact tracing. Uh, that will also help to discourage people from going into uh, private hospitals and making arrangements uh, themselves, if the centers are good, because some of the fillers we're getting is, um, Lego center is fine, but some of the centers, uh, set in, in other places, um, we have feelers that they are not so good, so people are scared or afraid of going there. Um, I think there's a good development. Uh, fair enough, uh, but the, the issue of um, a doctor uh, dying of treating a patient, how worrying is that for members of your profession? Yeah, um, the unfortunate thing is that center is not meant for that treatment, so we find everything wrong with it. Um, but you could also have cases where somebody will contact this in the, uh, this, the, the government treatment centers and still um, not make it. Uh, but in this case, as we spoke earlier, the extra danger that you pass it on to the population, to the public, to other patients, and this is a violation. So I think the Nigerian Medical Association also need to pass information um, to its members to refrain from such um, behaviors. It's well, not what about the safety measures at these private hospitals? Because in spite of the um, coronavirus, people have other ailments. We have pregnant women who need to deliver. We have uh, people who need to go take their uh, vaccine, vaccination shots and all of that. How can we 
keep those systems running and be safe at the same time. Yeah, I, I, the, the, the owners of these, as the medical directors of these hospitals, need to take certain action in their hands. We have other uh, facilities, factories, other offices that are still paying their staff that are not even making money in this period, and they still maintain their personnel. Um, so that's a good move. Now, if you're a hospital, in this case, you have to take extra uh, pain and put more resources in place to be able to prevent this situation. We have to, like I said, we need to divide these hospitals into, each person will take his hospital and have two sections, you know, divide it into two sections, say, you're going to use one particular section at a time and have your staff also divided into two. Have your protective gear. Just mask will not be enough in a hospital setting if you have a suspected case. Okay. You need your Google, you need your mask, you need face shield, you need a gown, you need proper use of gloves and training people on how to use to it. Use Sometimes you even have to assist the, uh, I mean, extra, another additional staff that will look after the person that is attending to a case, suspected case, to say, look, this is how to take off the gown to be sure the person is not making any mistake. mistake. Yeah. You know? People are risk, at risk, really, at this yeah. time. But let's look at uh, this picture on the front page of the Punch newspaper. There doesn't seem to be a lockdown. This was yesterday. There doesn't seem to be a we, lockdown. We, um, this thing is new, so there are a lot of things we have, we are learning. So as it happens, we need to take measures. Uh, but we need to be a little proactive. You see, in some organizations, in some countries, sorry, that are well organized, you see, please not just enforce when it's required. They also take part in emergency management. So we need to give training, extend training up to the police. Now, if a police sees that there's some traffic, there's a way they can partition people almost immediately. You don't just have to stop at the edge and be disturbing people and like, why are you here? You can now get more back up and stop at some point in between and tell them to space uh, the, the, the vehicles in between themselves. Even though these people are in vehicle, the risk is minimal, but where they're going to and where they're coming from. So it, it's something that we need to learn. If it is because it's a shopping day, they have, the, you know, we have a window that people could go, go out and, and, shop, and, and yes. get food. We probably have to uh, divide it into sections and say, if you leave between uh, maybe Aja and um, Chevron or somewhere at Ikate, you can come out also time. Another from there but to uh, yeah, uh, so there has to be and some that, that a further coordination. We, yes, we need to do further coordination and, and get it better. All right, let's go over to the Nation newspaper and see what's there this morning. Uh, we have uh, Tinubu massive spending way out of economic crisis. Hmm. Are they going to share money? <laughs> All right, there's a writer to that story. APC stored gives post-virus revival appeal. Uh, a couple of uh, suggestions there for you. You might not be seeing it clearly. Um, Eight-point recommendation. You see full test of um, uh, the message on pages two and one of the paper. We also have a recap of the over two million cases uh, globally. Uh, as well as the debt toll and the recoveries that we've had uh, both globally and in Nigeria. Um, some other stories here. Um, in the face of this crisis, we're having fires seeming, seemingly springing up from all corners. In Abuja, in the last two weeks, we've had a couple. Yesterday, there was another fire. And um, people are really worried about this because there's a picture here um, of another situation, I think, in a battle uh, yesterday. Uh, that's it on your screen. What, what do you make of these? Is it that uh, the fact that people are not in these premises that's triggering this or somebody are, some persons are intentionally uh, trying to trick us by sabotaging things? Um, both are possible. Uh, usually, you know, we don't have... Um good regular power supply so if someone gets there temporarily and maybe switch put on some appliances and left and maybe they seize power and the person forgot it that can also happen trigger fire. can trigger and then once in a while so when you are actually 
in use of these things regularly, you will know ahead of time when it's showing some sign, maybe it's an air conditioner, but in this case, people are not actually going to work. But however, since we've seen some of these behaviors outside, it's also likely that uh, people are, <laughs> there are, are some being, okay. taking advantage. <laughs> yes. All right, let's, let's see this one about uh, 32 patients discharged in Lagos, Oshu, Kaduna, and the FCT. It has a rider. Break COVID-19 transmission link. Buhari urges a PTF. Let's start with the good news. Is it good news, really? Uh, eh, eh, because there are some quarters where there are fears that these people that have said to, uh, that are said to have tested negative twice might still be harboring the virus in, the, in their bodies. Um, no, it, once you test negative, uh, it, it's, nothing is not, it's impossible in medicine, right? Anything is possible, anything can happen. But if the person has been checked and because there's a criteria for discharging, so the, most of the times you hear uh, around some countries outside here that uh, people were discharged and they were tested positive again. Remember, some people were living in their houses before they now moved to the hospital, and they're probably not alone. They maybe also have family members well, that already have Yeah, so now they've gone home and they are now mingling with this same case. So they might get. Uh, further contaminated with from those virus, but so there's own, so much we still don't yes, know. Yes, there's so about much we don't know. So it's very hypothetical things we are thinking. What, how manage, how possible? But the fact that what we know is that these cases are not very serious like the first time. So they can easily because they've developed some level of immunity. So the only danger is they can now spread it further Without because they are relatively well. It. Yes, that's, and that's why scary. we need to take further uh, the social distancing, the use of masks if you're not sure of um, the yes, environment. Yes, status. Yeah. Well, how are you giving the uh, directions? Are, are we still, is this caution um, really a transmission link? Haven't we passed that? Isn't it in the communities already? Because we know that the NCDC has announced that there are already community transmission because they have they've had cases they've announced cases of people who had no travel history no contact to the people who right. had these yes. cases and they are infected yes so is, is it a little too late really at this time uh, uh, well as long as they're good direction because it's never we need to come up come up with something uh, solutions and act on it uh, uh, fully so even though because there's a thin line. It's difficult at the beginning to know exactly when you start having the community transmission. So, but as the numbers are increasing, we need to check um, these measures. All right, let's see what's on the Tribune now. Um, Nigerian Tribune, a uh, couple of uh, the fires that we talked about. We have officers, shops burnt in Dugbe Market. Fire got CAC headquarters. There's a picture on the front page for you just minutes the headline you're looking at right now COVID-19 Chinubu wants cash support uh, through BVN oh we sort of skipped talking about that I want to hear your thoughts on this uh, Chinubu wants cash support through BVN says most families need relief make cash for sacked workers private firm banks others what's your take on his position is, yeah, the, is that mean, a way to rejuvenate the economy more spending well, you mean this is the cash there to assist people with, right? Yes, yes, that's what he's saying. I yeah, think but it's, it's good because we have to explore all measures. We have received a lot of complaints that people are not receiving this money. So we have to look at all possible measures, but not just BVN. There are some people that they don't, have they bank they don't even have bank account at all. Or because they've withdrawn everything from the bank account and it's gone dormant, they can't even access it because banks are not open for them to go there. They will not even know. Uh, that they have gotten the, the, the money. You see some cases people just request for a few amount and they tell, please, if you've sent it, call me because I don't get a lot and stuff like that. Yes, so that's actually happened to me yesterday. Exactly. Uh, there's a lady that was supposed to get some money and she said she doesn't have notice on her phone. Exactly. So uh, using BVN alone might not work. And that calls for the... Uh, there are a lot of things we need to do now and after this situation of COVID-19. The social welfare service. We need to know people where they are and their status. This is key because it is not during the lockdown you want to know who you want to go and give this um, help to. It is ahead of time. 
And, and, and this is a lesson for some of the states that are uh, not yet in a full lockdown to take time and have a list of people and the group of people in the areas they need to go in uh, during lockdown so that they don't have uh, cases, similar cases of what's happening in Lagos here. Yeah. Uh, how worried are you that, uh, I mean, some persons have said the coronavirus will, might not kill them, but hunger will. But some didn't factor in uh, the cases of um, security agents. Uh, at the moment, this, there's this headline in front on, at the top of the Tribune newspaper. It says, Human Rights Commission accuses security agents of killing 18 Nigerians. This is within the period of three weeks. What worries you about this? Because, I mean, if the fear of virus is what is keeping us home, should we also be afraid of security agents on the streets? Um, this is a poor coordination. Um, the, we have to take a lesson from here, and, and the, the, I expect the Commissioner of Police in the various states to talk to their men. Uh, definitely it's going to happen. When somebody is hungry, you can't stay at home. You will likely go out to see if you can get bread or somebody to help you. And it happens. There is a, a case that I, I know happened in the northeast when the person got a gunshot. Uh, why? Because they, they, they were all locked down at home and they were safe during the Boko Haram crisis. But he had to go out uh, to us late evening. And when he was asked, because thank God he survived, he said, look, it was because I wanted to get food. And then he got shot, you know, not by police, but uh, the, the, the um, uh, Boko Haram insurgents uh, members. So uh, That's uh, worrying, really. Yeah. Let's see what's on business day. On the front page, worst recession since 1987 means Buhari's poverty rollback vow a mirage. Uh, for ordinary Nigerians, life will get bleaker. It doesn't sound really good to be reading this, to be honest. Um, there's a picture of uh, Governor Babajide Songwulu um, showing, leading by example, of course, um, with uh, social distancing uh, during a press briefing. That's the big picture on the front page. Experts call for more private sector role for Nigeria post COVID 19 as Business Day holds second digital dialogue. Stocks jump by most since early January as Dangote cement gains 10%. That's um, uh, some of the headlines on the business day. Uh, that's it on your screen now. Uh, we jumped quickly to The Guardian. We just pissed the two of them together. Um, government under fire over COVID-19 evacuation, emergency flights. Uh, there's been some controversy over that. Uh, there are two writers to that story. Um, Lagos Abuja airports record daily arrivals. Over 2,500 foreigners evacuated. Uh, we also have the countdown of cases in Nigeria on the front page as well. And uh, how U.S. suspension of WHO funding threatens COVID-19 Fight. Medical experts warn of health system collapse. Governments to use special register BVN for palliatives. Lots of talk about that. Um, FG restricts begins evacuation of trucks in Lagos. But before we go, I want to take your quick thoughts on the U.S. suspension of funds to the WHO. Um, what are the implications of this, especially uh, in this time of crisis? Um, well. Um that is, I mean, U.S. contribute the highest uh, portion usually. Um, this is not the right time to point uh, fingers, but I think lessons should be learned. So if uh, the U.S. government feel there are certain areas that uh, it wasn't well uh, coordinated by WHO, I think they should come out and, 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 and mention to WHO to learn from it and forge further. Um, definitely is going to impact in a way uh, even though WHO said it is not a problem, they will continue giving the support. But you know, these things can quickly escalate. Can, can, no, it, it can progress to even a year or more. Mm -hmm. it just that it's in phases, you know. Mm -hmm. So there are possibilities that um, the countries, especially the developing countries, that benefit from this, and also certain level of research and uh, assistance that goes to these lower countries is going to be impacted in a way. Uh, but hopefully, maybe other countries will up their contribution or WHO has some reserve. But uh, it's not a good move and also not uh, encouraging. I think what they need to do is to point out the areas that WHO uh, didn't perform well and then they learn from it. And, uh, I just have a concluding thought. The evacuation of Nigerians, uh, what's your take on it generally? The coordination, uh, the people coming back, some that most likely having the virus in spite of the measures that has been taken? Um, 
I don't know at what level, because in this kind of situation, it would be good to have them tested. You know, before you, you arrange this evacuation, it's not good to bring in people in thousands. You can bring them in batches where you can control their safe isolation after they have returned home. That's one. Two, before they leave where they're coming from, it would be good to have them tested so you will know, so that you don't even bring them together because they may be coming from different places. But bringing people back home is something that has to be done. You can imagine if you're stuck somewhere in, Alone. Uh, in, in another country, even if it's an African country, say in Angola or in the UK, and you've only traveled for a week for a business or, or pleasure to, to see family members just for a week, and then you got trapped. Um, if you are lucky, you have somebody that you can stay with, that's okay. But many people will stay in a hotel and of course you run out of money. Let's see what happens with that. Uh, government is making efforts. Uh, in spite of the condemnation, they are making efforts. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. All right, and thank you for watching. That's how we wrap things up this morning. Uh, please don't forget you can watch most of what you see on TV uh, on YouTube. That's at Plus TV Africa. You can watch this again um, on our channel. You can follow us on our social media platforms as well for updates and information. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Please stay safe.